Here's why I get referrals from so many amazing occupational therapists when children are struggling with their handwriting. The truth is, handwriting starts with your vision. Before your pen can even touch the paper, you have to visualize what you're gonna write. So this would explain why children are, or even teens or adults may struggle with spacing, sizing. A really great example that I like to use is if we were to write the word happy birthday in an arc. We know that the word happy is a shorter word than the word birthday. So the real challenge that we often face is we have to visualize where to end the word happy before we start the word birthday. Now, of course, we could draw this out as an arc and help ourselves, but that probably wouldn't look too good. And I didn't even do a very good job on a birthday card. So what's the real challenge? Why did this end up so uneven with all of the spacing? It's because I didn't properly visualize it before I even started. So that's where kids with visual processing challenges really struggle. But they're, of course, going to struggle in even simpler things. We all know that writing obviously takes a good hand grip, but one of the other challenges truly is just the beginning and getting started. And that's why as patients or as kids are learning their muscle memory, we have them start by just tracing the letters. Tracing is a perfect example of how it removes the visual processing system's task and load of work by already putting the picture for them to just trace. It's obviously much easier for a child to do that than to draw it on their own because when we have a dotted line, it does the work of a visual system for them. So now instead of having to do multiple things, they can just perform the task of motor skills and tracing. And we've removed the task of visualizing onto the paper. When we remove those dotted lines, now their brain has to do more work. They have to see the letter D and project it onto the paper before they can write it. This is why a lot of occupational therapists will refer to me when their handwriting is still uneven, or maybe they do weird spacing where letters are smushed together or really separated. The example of this sentence with its uneven spacing and sloppy lettering is a perfect example of where a patient probably has a binocular vision dysfunction. So here's a perfect example of where this would not be from a grip problem. And that's where OTs will refer to me once they see the grip and everything is fine. But this is a huge amount of spacing, too close together, too close together, splits into the middle of the same word, sloppy lettering. This is something where the patient probably is getting occasional double vision, maybe deficient tracking, deficient saccades, and may even just have a really condensed sense of space where they can only handle this much space at a time instead of being able to handle a lot of space. And so it's gonna be really hard for them to plan out their sentences. In the same way that in a much more complex form, if I were to have a hard time planning out happy birthday to be in an arc nicely, I'm gonna end up with this big gap at the end of my happy birthday arc. This is obviously much more complex planning, but if we're having a hard time just doing this, then it's probably a visual processing deficiency. I hope this helped and kind of gave some insight as to why kids or even teens may be struggling with handwriting and penmanship. If their grip is fine and they're trying really hard, it's probably a binocular vision dysfunction. It's present in over 30% of the general healthy population, and a group of ophthalmologists just found that over 50% of a group of college students that they evaluated had a binocular vision dysfunction. These are really, really common and can definitely be treated and cured so we don't have to struggle forever.